The sun is an amazing thing. The giver of light, the giver of life. A big ball of fusion awesomeness, it was once thought to be a god itself. And in this view from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, it truly is beautiful. But my opinions regarding the sun aren't the only ones in existence. After all, Flat Earthers also have opinions regarding that big glowy thing in the sky. Not only do they have opinions, but they also have claims. And in this video, I will be addressing one of them. The claim, ladies and gentlemen, is that the sun is not millions of miles away, but is in fact small and local. You see, Flat Earthers assert that the Sun is between 55 to about 65 kilometers across and about 5,000 to about 6,000 kilometers in altitude. Now, it might seem like they're just pulling these numbers out of thin air, but there's actually a reason for claiming these values. And the reason is that those values are needed in order to make the Eratosthenes observation work with the Flat Earth model. The observation done by Eratosthenes, which was performed over 2,000 years ago, had the goal of measuring the circumference of the Earth using the parallel rays of a distant sun. He had heard that in Syene during the summer solstice at noon, it was possible to see down a vertical well right to the bottom, meaning the sun was right overhead. But that was not the case in Alexandria, where a stick in the ground would cast an obvious shadow. He was able to measure the angle of that shadow, and he was able to pay someone to walk and measure the distance between the two cities. By knowing the shadow angle in Alexandria and the distance to Syene, he was able to calculate the circumference of the Earth. The angle of the shadow was measured at 7.2 degrees, and the distance to Syene was about 800 kilometers. And after doing some simple math with these values, he got an answer of 40,000 kilometers for the circumference of the Earth. And there you have it. The circumference of the Earth is about 40,000 kilometers, right? Well, flat earthers would be quick to disagree. Because here's the thing. If you place the sun around 6,000 kilometers in altitude over a flat Earth, it will work with similar values. It works with the Eratosthenes observation. So, why assume that the sun is far away in the first place? A small and local sun works with the math, so long as the Earth is flat. But this isn't the only justification Flat Earthers give for their claims of a local sun. They also have the 45 degree argument, which goes like this. If you were at 45 degrees latitude, like in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and observed the sun during the equinox, the sun would be at 45 degrees in elevation during solar noon. And since you're about 5,000 kilometers away from the equator, that would mean that the sun is 5,000 kilometers in altitude. Flat earthers would say this is some simple math that shows that the sun is local. Now, I could highlight the obvious contradiction with these findings, but then flat earthers would just challenge me to debunk the concept of a local sun entirely. Well, Challenge accepted. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we now have two competing models. The round earth model with a distant sun, and the flat earth model with a local sun. So, let's ask the obvious question. Which model best comports with reality? And lucky for us, I know exactly how we can find the answer to that question. Because one thing we need to realize is that there are consequences for placing the sun so close to the Earth's surface. By doing so, you allow for the sun to shift in apparent size throughout the day. And how much it would shift in size is very predictable, thanks to some basic trigonometry. If you would like to see that math, it will be listed in the description. But for this video, I got in contact with Sly Sparkane to make a 3D model of the Flat Earth because, let's face it, it's more visually appealing than a bunch of equations. So, let's take a look. What you are seeing on your screen is a representation of the Flat Earth model with a local sun. The altitude of the sun in this model is 5,000 kilometers. I instructed Sly to place a camera on my latitude in Florida and to track the sun from sunrise 
to sunset during the equinox. This is to predict what we would expect to see on the flat earth model. So after doing that, this is what we found. As you can see, the flat earth model predicts that the sun would shift greatly in angular size as the day progressed. Between sunrise and solar noon, the angular size would change by a factor of two, only to shrink right back down again at sunset. Clearly, such a dramatic shift in size would be obvious to an observer on the ground. But what about the round earth model with a distant sun? What does that model predict regarding the sun's angular size? Well, here's the TLDR on that. The round earth model predicts there would be no discernible change in angular size throughout the day. So obviously, this means the sun would remain the same size in the frame of our camera no matter the time of day. The math of this prediction is what's currently on your screen, so feel free to pause and look it over. So our two models have two separate predictions. The flat earth model predicts that there would be a change in the sun's angular size between sunrise and sunset. The globe model predicts that there would be no discernible shift in the sun's angular size no matter the time of day. With that, I guess there's only one thing left to do, which is to do the observation and let reality speak for itself. So here's the plan. On the day of the equinox, I will travel to the Dunedin Causeway in Dunedin, Florida, and I'll do so for a nice day of solar tracking and probably some sunburn. To record the sun all day long, I will use my Nikon P1000, the only camera flat earthers trust for some reason. To make sure I cut out the glare from the sun, and to make sure I don't destroy my camera, a proper solar filter will be used. I will set the zoom of my camera once, and only once, so when I start recording, the zoom will not be adjusted. To make tracking much easier, the Nikon will be placed on my Celestron 6SE telescope mount, the very same telescope mount that I use to track rocket launches. I will set the mount to automatically track the sun, and I'll make minor corrections as needed. So with that, let's head off to Dunedin, Florida, where we will answer the question, does the sun change in angular size? Well, let's find out. All right, guys, we are now tracking the sun with the Nikon P1000. On this day, the day of the equinox, September 22nd, 2022. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the time lapse. It's currently 9 o'clock in the morning, and tracking is going very well. Alright guys, current time is 11 a.m. and we are still tracking the sun. It is currently 1 p.m. and we are still tracking the sun.
current time is 3 p.m. and solar tracking is proceeding as normal. Current time is 5 p.m. Still tracking the sun with about two and a half more hours to go. And there it is, sunset. Current time, 727. I'm gonna call that a successful day. A very successful day indeed. So, what did we learn from this observation? Well, there was some distortion when the sun was close to the horizon, but this was obviously due to the atmosphere. While this will impact the apparent size of the sun just a bit, the change is too minimal to save the flat earth. For the majority of the day, it remained the same size in the frame of our Nikon P1000, and of course, this means the Flat Earth model does not comport with reality. On the other hand, the Round Earth model made a prediction about what we would observe regarding the Sun's angular size, and it turned out to actually be the case. So the Round Earth model does comport with reality. And the best thing about this observation is it can be repeated by anybody. So if you want to do this observation yourself, then I encourage you to do so. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, in conclusion, the problem remains for the Flat Earth. I would like to thank Sly Sparkane for helping me with this video. You can find a link to his channel listed down below. And I would like to thank all of you for watching this video. So don't forget to hit like, don't forget to hit subscribe, and share this video everywhere. My name is Red, this has been his rhetoric, and as always, have a good night.